All right, day two on the hog splitters. Today is the day we are going to drill our holes here, here, and here, and then also for the tang, we need to drill our holes for the uh, the pins. I'm looking at that hole, it looks a little off. What do you think, Dex? Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. We can fix that. We are drilling and heat treating today. Right here on Housework. I appreciate you guys following along. This is a series of videos where we are just documenting our day in the workshop. So, hope you come along with us. And, yeah, what do you think? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Something like this. Yeah. And on this one, because this is for Alex, we're gonna put the, the bigger hole in the back. But yeah, make your make don't mark that one or mark it far to the left or whatever. And just probably up here we're gonna mark them by hand, the big ones. I was actually thinking about going a little bigger on this one because I like the small hole, but I think it could be a little bit bigger. We have a three-quarter inch bit for that. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna wanna, this hole down here is gonna be a nice big three quarter hole, I think. So this one, you may end up having to modify your pin structure. Although I kinda like that. Mm-hmm, I don't know what to Yeah. your system set up here what are you drilling it out at 730 seconds all because we're using 316 brass right yeah. yeah that's gonna look cool and then we've got some really cool hardwoods like this cabruve cabruve Cab cabruve how do you how do you pronounce that why are you asking me you oh. don't even know how Hey, I figured you were educated, so you could tell me. Cabruva. Okay. Cabruva. 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 Maybe that. Maybe the. Wait. Yeah. That's how I think we should say it. Cabruva. Cab. Cabruva. Sounds like a pill or something you would take for like arthritis. <laughs> So I think I'm going to take this half inch drill bit and sharpen it. It's, uh, it's about due. It's drilled a lot of stuff and today we're going to be drilling more with it. So yeah, we're going to get out the drill doctor and give it a sharpen. It's turned out pretty good. Once you get the hang of this drill doctor, it really actually is pretty simple to use and it keeps me from going to Harbor Freight and buying those $11 drill bit sets. It's been almost a year, can you believe that?
so what we're gonna do and what we've been doing recently is using a single fluted chamfer bit countersink and these work really great for just cleaning up the edges of some of the smaller holes and do you want to drill since you're set up for half inch do you want to drill the rest of them sure. that half inch might as well <laughs> That's the small bit? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's when you know it's sharp. You get those nice springs. Yeah. Smoothie here when you're ready for it. Okay. Mm. It's good. It's good. getting ready to distress one of these I had the idea that uh, it'd be kind of cool just to have some distressing looks on it and uh, I can't find my other ball peen hammer I have this old guy that I picked up but uh, so we went over to Harbor Freight and bought their cheap ball peen hammer set for like 16 bucks I think these will do the job it's always nice to have a few of those around but yeah Got some of those too. Harbor Freight is still open, by the way. So I just got a little bit of cleanup left on these outer edges here. I just noticed that a couple of them are a little wavy, so I'm gonna clean that up. And I don't know how I did this, but totally screwed up spacing these holes here, or maybe it's just this one. So I'm gonna fix that real quick and then we are gonna heat treat. A few months ago, I'd gotten an email from a guy named Mike who helped develop the A2 tool steel heat treating process for Gerber and a couple other uh, big knife manufacturers. Mike, I'm still using your stuff. I appreciate you, thank you so much. He says preheat to 1350 or 1400 for 30 minutes minimum. And then we will Austin ties at 1725 to 1775 for 20 minutes. Did make this uh, plate quenching vise set up here. It's all bolted down, I can't move. And we will be placing the 
cleavers in here and air quenching them. If you haven't already watched the video on this, this is a old ceramic kiln that I've repurposed for heat treating. Created a little setup here so that um, we can uh, heat treat pretty easily with a, a PID controller and it's all self-contained. The electronics for the most part are, are not in use. These, these guys here are not in use. It's, uh, it's all contained in here. I'll link to that video in a card and in the description so you guys can check it out. It costs about 400 bucks to build this whole thing. That's buying the uh, kiln for 300 bucks. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes and we are at 988 Fahrenheit, ramping up to 1400 to soak. Now that I think about it, I think I'm gonna look up the temperatures again, the process for normalizing A2. I think I can do it at 1400, but I need to um, just double check that. But yeah, they're a little too long to go all the way down into the kiln, but that's not a big deal. I'm not planning on hardening the handles anyway, so. The smell in here is amazing. There's something about this kiln when you fire it up all the old quench oil and stuff that landed on the top, it burns off. It smells like a french fry in here. So according to this website, it says A2 tool steel, do not normalize. So 1550 to 1600 is the uh, heat treating temperature. Which is why I think Mike probably made reference to bringing the A2 to 1400 for a bit just to slowly ramp it up. And then I was reading back in his emails and he talks about tempering and someone had actually asked me about tempering a2 and he says here if you temper a2 at 600 fahrenheit for maximum strength and ductibility you will sacrifice wear resistance but what he's saying is it's like a teeter-totter if you if at 600 fahrenheit uh let me just read this here yeah uh, Tempering A2 at 600 Fahrenheit will lower your hardness and wear resistance, but increase your impact strength or toughness. It will be easier to sharpen, but will not hold the edge as well. That's the sacrifice. Uh, it says that um, tempering A2 at 600 Fahrenheit is like having the teeter-totter level or parallel to the ground. That comes in handy when making an axe head versus a knife. So I think what he's trying to say is that like in this particular case, because we are making a, a big cleaver, uh, it would make sense to temper it around 600 degrees because we are going to be using it for chopping and like heavy impact stuff. Makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Uh, we'll find out because I'm going to do it. One of the things I'm noticing already with this quarantine lockdown situation we're in is how many people who are reaching out to me and I am reaching out to them and they are able to actually respond, which is great, in, including some people who I wanted to talk to for a long time. Um, one of which is Adam over at Maker Table. Uh, Adam didn't know, but years ago I found his channel because I wanted to get a CNC plasma cutter for my shop and I wanted to build one. And I watched his entire series on YouTube about him building one. And um, so anyway, I reached out to him uh, and we started chatting back and forth and, and started working on a collaboration. We wouldn't normally be having the time to do that, but I feel like there are a lot of benefits from this situation we're in. And I truly feel like, you know, we're like gonna be the Phoenix rising up from the ashes after this, bigger and better and more strong. So I feel good about it in some ways and I'm terrified in others, but I do really love the idea that all of a sudden we all have time on our hands to just connect again. Even though we're on social media, we're chatting, we're doing other stuff, the connections seem more real and more deep, which to me is awesome. So. Uh, check out Adam's channel, by the way. I'm going to send a link down into the description, also to his Instagram. The dude is inspiring. He has inspired me to be a better business person and also a better content creator. The guy built a business from nothing out of his garage years ago, and now he has a really successful sign-making business and website and the whole deal. So uh, truly inspired by you, Adam. Thank you so much. 
And uh, yeah, we're uh, ramping up and soaking those blades. I'm starting to get my caffeine kicked in here. I left the house like before 7 a.m. So um, yeah, I'm still a little tired. And I got a little drunk yesterday. We are at just under 1200 Fahrenheit. And you can see the blades are getting that nice patina tempering color on them. I really like that. Really hot down in there. So yeah, we are progressing. Hog splitters were sitting down sort of resting on the bottom of the kiln. And I thought, you know what? Uh, I would hate to see them sag with that heat. So I just put some stainless steel pins in there just to hold them up even a half inch off the bottom of the kiln just to keep them straight. So, and Mike's email says, you know, you should hang them. So that's what I'm doing. 1254. Also, I'm connecting with my buddy, Matthew Walker, who I met through this community and uh, messaging back and forth because I am interested in starting my leather crafting journey. That's uh, something I haven't really focused on. I have zero experience and it turns out he used to teach for Tandy Leather. Of course, of course. I mean, you know, uh, the universe puts people in our path for a reason. So Matthew, thank you so much. He's recommending all the tools and everything I need to get into leather working. So. That will be our next uh, sort of jaunt into the whole knife making, bladesmithing, crafting thing. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful Sunday so far. Beautiful Sunday. Also, these are the hardware bins I was referring to in the workbench video. I want to incorporate these into the sides of that table. And I got an awesome message from Dustin over at the Art of Craftsmanship on instagram and he even took the time to draw out my workbench and put it on um like even created like my angle grinder stuff i know it's hard to see on my phone but um yeah dude this is awesome thank you dustin thank you so much uh so yeah the the idea is to replace this big bad boy here with something that's a lot thinner and then also this guy too so these two will basically be combined into a 28 inch by 10 foot long workbench that's going to be on casters that will get pushed up against this wall here and that will serve as my storage for my hardware there'll be integrated dust collection thanks to dustin's idea and also jacob on youtube had uh, commented about those big uh, fold out uh, drawer things that kind of lift up so you can put stuff on them and uh, i think that's a great idea i love that concept so right in the center there will be a opening for tools that will nest down in and you can pull that rack out and use them and then put them back the older i get the less uh inclined i am to bending over and picking up heavy stuff so um yeah i, I love that concept you guys rock thank you so much i love this community we are doing amazing things together and I can't wait to see what happens in the future. So, All right, so we've been soaking now for 30 minutes and we are going to be pulling these out there at 1750 Fahrenheit. The plan is to put them in this angle, pull one out at a time, and then cool them with the, the air. So we will have to see how well that goes. Give it a shot. Turn off the kiln. They're very, very hot down in there.
interested to see the hardness level is on those. But yeah, I think it came out all right. Lots of scale to clean up. Blue everywhere, but no big deal. So I cleaned this guy up and it looks pretty good to me. I'm really happy with how it came out so far. Of course, I still have to do the handle, but uh, we're getting close. That was a 60 and an 80 grit pad that I used on that pneumatic random orbital. And then I hit that with a, um, hit the, the edge with a surface conditioning belt just to kind of clean things up a little bit. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely hard. This blade is insanely hard. So anyhow, guys, I hope you liked the format. If you did, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And I hope you guys are doing great out there. You're happy and healthy and you're getting some time in your shop. As always, I'm going to leave my cell phone number down below. If you want to reach out to me, feel free. You can call it or text it. I may not answer it, but I will most likely always answer a text. So a few of you have used it since I released that in the last video. And I want you to know that together we are stronger. So we will get through this. And hey, man, it's, uh, it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. We will be better on the other side. All right, guys, have a great day. Hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. Housework.